whether you're just learning about variable speed technology, you're currently installing variable speed products, or you have been installing variable speed products for a long time, you probably ask yourself the same question I do. How does it do that constant airflow thing? How does it maintain airflow? How, how do you get all these airflow selections? And why can't a PSC motor do this? That's what we're going to talk about here. The limitations of a PSC motor are simply the fact that it's built with a limited amount of poles and it's operated by a specific frequency. Okay? Most of your indoor blower motors, PSC, are six pole, which means they are going to run around 1200 RPMs because of the 60 cycle frequency that is delivered to the motor. The motor is limited by the gearing or the amount of poles that are in it, which cannot be changed. And it's limited by the frequency that's delivered to the motor, which is kind of like having an engine in your car that only runs at one RPM. There's no way to change that. Okay? To limit that even more, most PSC motors are three to five speeds, with five speeds being the max. Most PSC motors are only three, uh, three speeds. So to get your uh, constant fan, your first stage heat, second stage heat, first stage cool, second stage cool, Okay, you get the idea. You don't have enough speeds to precisely deliver the exact amount of airflow for every demand like you do in variable speed. And finally, external static pressure. A PSC motor has no control over external static pressure. In fact, I like to say it's a slave to static pressure. When filters get dirty, registers are closed, the PSC motor will simply reduce airflow and, and uh, decrease the efficiency of the system which is also going to decrease the capacity of the system, making the homeowner less comfortable. So now that I've told you what a PSC motor can't do, let me tell you what a variable speed motor can do and how it does it. When we develop the motor, we put in a program that allows the motor to maintain airflow. However, the manufacturer at the HVAC OEM has to teach the motor what airflow is. So every manufacturer that uses a variable speed motor is going to teach the motor how to relate airflow to torque and speed and relate that to changes in external static pressure in the system. They're going to run the motor at a low static pressure, a medium static pressure, a high static pressure, and they're going to teach the motor exactly how much torque and speed it required to make a specific amount of airflow on that motor. Once this is done, we call the motor characterized. Once the motor is characterized, it is unique to that air moving system. What that means is, once a variable speed motor is programmed for one manufacturer's specific model and specific size, it can only be used in that model and specific size. That's how accurately the motor is programmed. Every airflow point that is set on that motor three ton of cooling or the airflow that's designed for a proper temperature rise on the furnace will be exact and precise for that appliance because it was programmed specifically in that appliance. Now installation is actually very simple using the OEM's charts found in their installation manuals. That's what we're going to cover next. The HVAC manufacturer will put on their circuit boards in the furnace air handler or package system dip switches, jumper pins, uh, dials, or even model plugs that will allow you to select the proper airflow for heating, cooling, constant fan, uh, dual fuel systems, electric strips, every airflow point that needs to be set up in that system, and your enhanced comfort options. The charts that are used to set those switches look like what you see here. And this is just an example. Every manufacturer is going to do their charts a little differently. If you've read enough manuals, you know that. But basically, you have the ability to select the exact airflow for cooling. And if we look at example here, uh, letter C on the cooling chart would give me 1,200 CFM. Or if it wasn't a jumper pin, which your jumper pins are usually A, B, C, and D, maybe it's dip switches. And we see in the 1,200 CFM cooling chart, dip switches 1 and 2 would be off and on. And that's literally all there is to it. I would have just now set up the cooling airflow perfectly matched for that system by either flipping those two switches 
or moving that one jumper pin. So going around the uh, uh, screen here, we can see that there's heating airflow setup, there's uh, trim adjust to change the airflow for uh, better dehumidification or enhanced cooling, and there's my climate profiles for even more dehumidification. So at first glance, variable speed looks very complicated, but as you can see, it's, it's actually very easy. And as easy as it is, it makes the system do things that no other motor can do. So now let's look at where those controls are located in the HVAC system and how this whole process comes together. Some manufacturers still use a separate board for the communication that goes to the motor. So we see here a thermostat sending the demand call to an OEM uh, circuit board. The OEM circuit board will then send that demand call down to an interface or tap board where you would select your airflow settings. That board would then send the proper communication to our motor to tell it what airflow you want and what comfort options you want to provide. Many manufacturers today have now integrated those two circuit boards into one board. So the thermostat tells the main board what demand you're in and on the main board are all the selections for airflow and comfort and then that board sends the communication down to the motor. And there is one more latest and greatest technology and that is communicating systems. In a communicating system the thermostat, sometimes called a user interface, actually can be used to program the airflow and comfort settings in uh, menu selections on a digital screen. So instead of using the jumper pins or dip switches, you would literally uh, program the thermostat kind of like you program your phone or any other handheld device. That device hanging on the wall would then send the digital signal down to the control board, which would send a digital signal down to the motor. Now that we know how to set the airflow and comfort options up for the system, let's look at how the variable speed motor can maintain airflow and why a PSC motor cannot. We see here on the chart there's external static pressure numbers across the bottom going from zero up to uh, one inch total external static pressure. And in case you're not up on what external static pressure is, external static pressure is simply a measurement of the resistance to airflow in the duct system. So the smaller the duct is, the more dirty the filter is, the more registers that are closed, the higher your external static pressure will be. On the uh, left-hand side column, we see CFM. And we're just going to go with the average 400 CFM per ton, which is an industry standard. So if we look at the uh, red line, we see that my variable speed motor, when selected for 1,200 CFM for a three ton of cooling, is going to maintain 1,200 CFM all the way up to one inch of external static pressure. What we also see from these curved lines is that a PSC motor doesn't even come close. If you look at the middle line, which is the medium speed on a PSC motor, we see that the only time it's even close to making 1200 CFM is at 0.6 static, and as that external static pressure goes up, my airflow continues to go down. Now the interesting thing about that is, manufacturers rate their equipment for its efficiency and its capacity, according to AHRI, at usually around 0.5 or less total external static pressure. So if this PSC motor has to run at a higher static pressure to make the same airflow, then the system is actually running at under capacity and under efficiency from the way the manufacturer designed it. So we see that the variable speed motor actually maintains capacity and efficiency using constant airflow technology. However, I should point out, and you can see it on this chart, that we only guarantee that airflow up to around one inch of total external static pressure. And that's because that's the way the manufacturer designs their system. So we will maintain airflow when external static pressure goes up, when filters get dirty, when registers are closed. However, there are even limitations to variable speed motors. This last graph I'm going to show you, and I promise it is the last graph, shows what's happening internally in the variable speed motor. And even though you'll never work on this portion of the motor and you may not fully understand it, I think it will help you understand how the motor is capable of maintaining constant airflow. On the bottom of this graph is torque. Torque is the power delivered from the control to the motor to drive it, to give it the horsepower it needs to operate. On the left hand side we see speed, and speed is simply RPMs of the shaft. What the red line indicates is once the manufacturer programs each motor unique to each air handling system, 
It also teaches it each airflow point. In other words, it teaches it how to make 800 CFM, 900 CFM, 1,000 CFM. And what we're seeing is just one of those lines. So when the motor first turns on, as we see here at point A, and if the system is running at a low static, it's simply going to add torque until the speed and torque intersect on the red line. And now the motor knows it's making 800 CFM. But what happens when external static pressure goes up is and again, external static pressure goes up when the filter loads up or the registers are closed. We actually are causing the blower motor and wheel to do less work because it's moving less air. So the RPMs of the motor go up. This is also going to happen on a PSC motor. However, once the PSC motor RPMs go up, that's all it can do. It can't change its operation from that point, so it simply moves less air. So we see at point B, the variable speed motor is also drifting up in its RPMs, but then that's where the constant airflow program kicks in. The motor realizes it's no longer on the red line. The red line is where we told it to be for the demand we're in right now. The motor responds by adding more power, torque, and as we see it shift along the point, the torque goes up, the speed goes up, and finally the motor comes back to operating at 800 CFM. So a couple of things that are interesting that we learn about looking at this graph is that we are maintaining constant airflow, but there's two things that we have to realize are going to happen. The motor is going to run faster, and that is going to make more noise. So if we don't address duct issues before we install a variable speed system, we could cause the system to be even more noisy than it was before. And yes, the motor is going to draw more power to maintain constant airflow. But as long as we don't let that external static pressure get too high, even at a uh, mid-level external static pressure, the variable speed is still going to be maintaining airflow using less energy than the PSC motor. So variable speed ECM's biggest benefits include constant airflow, increased electrical efficiency, increased comfort by having the precise amount of airflow you need per demand, giving you dehumidification profiles, and giving you a quiet, efficient, constant fan. It's a premium motor that gives you the ability to install a premium system for your customer that delivers premium comfort.